Join me as I take on the challenge of stopping emotional eating for good. Can I crush my cravings and lose weight in the process? In today's video, I'll walk you through my journey to overcome emotional eating, a habit that's been a roadblock for many on their path to better health and weight loss. Emotional eating is a sneaky saboteur that often goes unnoticed, but it can derail even the best laid plans for healthier living. Emotional eating is when we turn to food, not because we're physically hungry, but because we're feeling emotional. Maybe we're stressed, bored, lonely, or anxious, and we reach for food as a form of comfort or distraction. While it may soothe us temporarily, emotional eating is a tough habit to break, and it can seriously hinder weight loss efforts. The core challenge of overcoming emotional eating is learning to distinguish between physical hunger and emotional cravings. Let's take a moment to think. When was the last time you truly questioned why you were reaching for that snack? Was it genuine hunger or was it just a reaction to boredom, stress, or an emotional trigger? This is a critical distinction to make because physical hunger is our body's natural cue for sustenance, while emotional cravings are driven by our feelings. Recognizing this difference is essential for making progress. When we eat because we're hungry, our body knows when to stop. We feel full and satisfied. However, when we eat due to emotional triggers, we often find ourselves in a cycle of overeating, which leads to guilt, shame, and frustration. This is especially harmful for those who are trying to manage their weight. Emotional eating can push us into a negative spiral where we eat too much, feel guilty about it, and then try to restrict ourselves, only to repeat the process again. This cycle is exhausting both physically and mentally. It leads to a roller coaster of emotions that's difficult to break free from, and it can feel like you're constantly sabotaging your own progress. So, how do we step off this emotional roller coaster? By becoming aware of our emotional eating habits and learning how to combat them. One reason emotional eating is so challenging to stop is that it's often deeply embedded in our daily routines. Many of us don't even realize we're doing it until it becomes a problem. We might automatically grab a snack when we're feeling down or reward ourselves with food after a long, stressful day. It's a habit that feels comforting, but ultimately, it doesn't address the underlying emotions we're experiencing. There are several common triggers for emotional eating, stress, boredom, loneliness, and even frustration. Imagine this scenario. You've had a long, stressful day at work, and the moment you get home, you head straight for the kitchen. Or maybe you're scrolling through social media, and seeing everyone else's perfect lives makes you feel inadequate, leading you to reach for some comfort food. Another common trigger is boredom. Those moments when you're sitting at home with nothing to do, and suddenly, a snack seems like the best idea. Recognizing these triggers is key to breaking the habit. So, how can we start identifying our emotional eating triggers? One strategy is to keep a food diary. Document not only what you eat, but also how you feel when you eat it. Did you eat because you were hungry? Or were you stressed, bored, or lonely? By tracking these patterns, you'll start to see connections between your emotions and your eating habits. Another effective strategy is to practice pausing before you eat. When you feel the urge to snack, stop for a moment and ask yourself, Am I really hungry, or is something else going on? Take a few deep breaths and try to assess what's happening. Are you stressed, anxious, or sad? What can you do to address those feelings without turning to food? Maybe it's time for a break, a short walk, or even just a moment of reflection. A powerful technique to combat emotional eating is to develop alternative coping mechanisms. Instead of automatically reaching for food when you're stressed or bored, create a toolkit of other activities you can turn to. For example, when you're feeling anxious, you could go for a walk, practice deep breathing exercises, or call a friend to talk through your feelings. These small shifts can have a big impact over time, helping you replace the habit of emotional eating with healthier behaviors. The most impactful technique, though, is mindfulness. Mindful eating is about being fully present with your food and your emotions. When we're mindful, we can recognize when we're eating to cope with emotions and when we're genuinely hungry. Mindfulness helps us slow down, check in with ourselves, and make conscious choices about what we eat and why. It's not just about stopping emotional eating, it's about building a healthier relationship with food overall. Mindfulness can help us break free from the cycle of emotional eating. It encourages us to enjoy food without guilt, and to eat in a way that truly nourishes our bodies. When we're mindful, we can savor our favorite foods without going overboard, and we can better understand when we're using food to fill an emotional void. This awareness is the first step toward breaking the cycle of emotional eating. So how do we practice mindfulness when it comes to eating? Start by paying attention to your body's hunger and fullness signals. Eat slowly and savor each bite. 
Notice how the food tastes, smells, and feels. And most importantly, check in with your emotions. Are you eating because you're truly hungry? Or are you using food to cope with something else? By practicing mindfulness regularly, we can make more intentional choices about what we eat and why. In summary, emotional eating is a major challenge for many of us, but it's not insurmountable. By becoming more mindful of our emotions and eating habits, and by developing alternative coping mechanisms, we can break the cycle of emotional eating. It's not about perfection, it's about progress and building a healthier relationship with food. By recognizing our triggers, pausing before we eat, and finding other ways to cope with stress and emotions, we can take back control of our eating habits and achieve our weight loss goals in the process. Thank you so much for watching. If you've ever struggled with emotional eating, I'd love to hear about your experiences in the comments. What strategies have you found helpful in overcoming emotional eating? Let's support each other on this journey to better health. And if you're ready to take your healthy eating habits to the next level, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out my next video on healthy meal prep tips.